Wonderful. Thank you all so much for being here on this beautiful July day. My name is Deanna Hansen. I'm a certified athletic therapist and the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy. And I'm being joined by my nephew, Quinn Castellane, the lead block therapist and VP of block therapy, and our very special guest, Anna Pond. Now, I remember the very first conversation I had with Anna. She had fractured her foot pretty severely and had watched one of our videos on YouTube about healing fractures really fast. So that started this journey with Anna. So Anna, I'm going to pass it over to you and share your story. Yes. So my name is Anna and I live in sunny Florida and I'm going to take you all back to 2016 when I was running with my grandkids. I'm extremely active and athletic and I was running around with my grandkids in a park and all of a sudden my left foot fell into about three foot deep hole and from the sudden severe impact my right foot became um, lodged inside um, it just so much pressure came onto my right foot and the pain was pretty intense like if you skip a step sometimes you have a lot of pain in your foot but now I have my whole weight of my body coming into my right foot because the left foot was gone into a three foot long hole. And so the pain was pretty, pretty bad. So I just began screaming, get me ice, get me ice, get me ice. I was still thinking that ice is the cure of acute trauma and um, they brought me ice. And so the pain kind of uh, got a little bit better. I eventually came home and I just did what they suggest to do, rice, um, resting, elevating, icing. And um, within three days, I realized I better go and have it x-rayed. So I went to the ER and I got it x-rayed and um, it showed metatarsal fractures right at the base. Three bones were broken, basically second, third, and fourth were crushed. There was slight displacement, not necessarily requiring the surgery. So I was like it that way. And they told me, no weight bearing for three months and come back in whatever, four weeks and we x-ray again, see how healing is going. And I was completely bummed because I cannot be just laying down and waiting for the foot bones to heal. So I began Googling how to heal fractures fast. And I came up about this couple of videos of some athletes going to Winnipeg and if in front of my eyes I just see them going from being on crutches they just they one they're able to walk they two they're jumping and day five that one young man he's just doing his sport related exercises and I was completely shocked and it was so profound to me I called Diana and she says yeah I can help you with that take your boot off and begin walking lean on your dining table and I was like what how do you know my bones are not going to displace even more? She says, just breathe, just breathe. So I didn't want to believe her at first. I was completely, I was, how can I take my boot off? I'm supposed to be in the foot for two months, but no. I received my block. I began the breathing. And I'm speaking about breathing. I have been teaching yoga since my 20s. And I had pretty amazing yoga teachers overseas. And so I knew about breathing, but not to the point of all the science of diaphragmatic breathing. And um, I was very new to block therapy concept. And so I began doing the classes. I began learning the correct breathing. And I began putting weight on my broken foot. And I just started walking. And within a week, I believe, I just began walking. And the more I walked, the better I, you get. And it's just all about, you know, healing the bones. As, as you put more pressure, the vibration assist more cells to be created in a bone and so i got very well very quickly so i was so blown away by this whole process that i signed up for the teacher training the same year in september i went to our very first um intensive in winnipeg i met diana i met queen i met everybody else lovely people from winnipeg and all over the whole united states and different parts of canada and other countries too, maybe, um, I don't remember exactly, but it was amazing experience. And I want to mention something that was, I remember so vividly. Well, due to my fracture, I wasn't practicing yoga as well as I'm used to doing it. And so I wasn't doing as much of my stretches. Now, during the intensive, I remember it so vividly, even though it's been four years ago, we were doing an intensive um, 
blocking on the back. And so I remember after one of the sessions, I did my cobra exercise and wow, my head went all the way back, parallel to the floor. And that was, that never happened before. I was, and I'm very flexible, extremely flexible. But when I saw it, I'm like, whoa. And I told Diana, Diana, look, I can't believe this. You remember Diana? And she says, wait, wait, let's take a, let's take a, let's take a picture. Let's take video. But it was kind of too late. So it was just incredible experience. I just will never forget what black did to my back. It made my back so pliable. It was just amazing. I went all the way back. My head was almost touching my buttocks. It was just unbelievable. But anyway, I came back to the United States. I continued then in December, January. I went overseas. I had my dad's birthday I go every January. So when I came back now, 2017, I came back from overseas, which was cold and freezing. It was like pretty much like New York City. I'm from New Jersey. And I went to on my bike ride. And when I went on my bike ride, something terrible happened. And here's what happened. I had a biking accident. I felt very hard. And the bike seat jammed into my crotch and fell very suddenly. I couldn't, I had no chance to get off the bike. And it just fell. And the bike seat jammed into my crotch. and and I knew something was wrong. So I fell and people ran to me and asking me if they can help me, if they can call 911. I said, no, 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 no. I need to be left alone. And I just dragged myself to the bench and I began breathing. I just began breathing. And the results are absolutely profound. When I began breathing, first of all, the pain just dissipated. The pain got so much better. And I called my husband. I asked him to come pick me up. He picked me up and I told him, take me to the ER. I want to have it x-rayed. So we went to the emergency room and um, I got x-rayed in my uh, pelvis area. And then I'm just laying there, there in a little cubicle and a doctor came and he now is comparing, doing his assessment. He's saying, okay, now remember, it's the right side where there is a pain, the right side of my pelvis right around the seating the, where you sit. So where the bike seat is basically. So he says, lift up your left leg, lift up your right leg, move your left leg to the left, move your right leg to the right, move your left leg to the right, move your left leg to the left. And he's asking me to do all these different movements and I'm doing the same. And he says, it hurts, no? Can you bend your knee? Yes. Can you lift your leg? Yes. Can you move your leg to the right? Yes. I can do everything the same as the left side. And so he says, okay, I can guarantee there is no fractures in your pelvis. I said, oh, great. Can I go home now? He says, no, let me run to the uh, other department, get your x-ray results. So he leaves me. He comes back with his phone. He took a picture of the x-ray. It's a big x-ray. And he says to me, look, you've got a fracture. I said, what? You told me you get that there is no fractures. And he said, well, I was wrong. So I had inferior, right inferior pubic ramus. Uh, there is two bones, um, left inferior pubic ramus, and there's also superior, but there was inferior pubic ramus, and the right one was broken. Just you can see like the, the fracture line. Again, very minimal displacement, not, not requiring the surgery. So... All right, now I'm bummed because I have another fracture now. However, I know what to do now. I wasn't that upset because I knew I'm going to bounce back in no time. Plus, when I realized how incredibly breathing only helped, I was totally fine. Then another funny story happened is that I'm on the bed and I tell the nurse, now he stepped out and I said to the nurse, please bring me the wheelchair, I have to go to the bathroom. And the nurse comes and she says, I'm sorry, but you cannot use the wheelchair. I have to bring you a bed pen. As per doctor's orders, you're not allowed to use a wheelchair because this is pretty bad fracture. And my mom had the same fracture and it's very painful and you can't use a wheelchair. And I said, I have to use a wheelchair. I don't want a bed pen. And she says, and she began yelling at me. She says, my mom had the same fracture and it's so, it's so dangerous. It's so, it's so painful. And I said, I'm going to walk then if you don't bring me the wheelchair. So she brought me the wheelchair. I, I put myself in the wheelchair, put myself, um, wheeled myself to the bathroom, which was not far at all. And so that was a very funny story about that hospital. So that was the last time I went to the doctor, actually, because I don't have an x-ray vision. Other than, that, other than that, I pretty much rely on block for everything, absolutely, every, absolutely everything. 
I use black for any kind of a chronic pain. Okay, let me tell you a story that I have always had severe pain in my thoracic spine to the right side. It was so painful, I had a hard time even cooking, sitting in front of computer, even just doing anything. It just always hurt me so bad, right at the right shoulder blade. And so all my family overseas, it's the Eastern European descent, and they all told me, well, my cousin, my aunts, we all have it. It's osteoporosis. Even my cousin Marina, she has some vertebrae fractured and cracked just from nothing, from no particular trauma or just nothing. And she would always tell me, that's just part of aging. We all have it. It's in our genes. You just, you just have it because we all have it. So I was kind of, oh, huh, that's not fun. But with blocking, I have no pain in my thoracic spine. I have no pain in my back at all. It's completely gone. It's just I don't even have it anymore. And it's a shame that people believe that they have these problems because of natural aging, but it isn't the case. Another, another thing I had is very, very, very severe chronic pain in my left shoulder right there. And that I thought was from my mom because she's always had shoulder bursitis and she'd suffered horrible pain. And I suffered pretty bad pain. I would get shots. I would go to a physical therapist. I would go to chiropractor. I would just be made to make this exercise when you put your fingers up the ladder and you just help your, just help your arm to go up because my arm wouldn't go up at all. It was just back. It was come and go. They told me the shoulder bursitis without any diet, you know, any assessment or anything. It's just like what your mom has, what you have. Well, to be honest with you, I don't have any shoulder pain either. None. And I couldn't even sleep on my favorite position to sleep, which is the left side, because the pain in the left shoulder was so intense that I couldn't even sleep. It's completely gone. And even when I get a little slightest hint of a pain coming, I immediately get on a block and I do some shoulder positions and it just never bothers me anymore. And that's what happened. Another thing, I know I have a lot of things to talk about, is um, it's the right elbow. I'm extremely, extremely active and in my younger days when I did um, competitive downhill skiing, I actually had my only open fracture. All the other ones were never open. This one was open, skin broken, blood dripping, and it was pretty dramatic view. You know, imagine going on down the lift with your elbow broken, with the blood dripping. It was just, oof. So I had that also happen to me. And as a result of any kind of a acute trauma, you are stuck with chronic arthritis. So I'm happy to report that it doesn't bother me at all since I began practicing block therapy. No pain in my elbow at all. Let's see, am I forgetting anything? So I'm very happy and very grateful to Diana that this block therapy actually came into my life and I'm introduced and I'm I mean block therapy is my doctor, is my massage therapist is my dentist. I don't have insurance. I just believe in tremendous benefits of block therapy. And I always, I never single block. Whenever I'm prone, I always put the block in my forehead and the brows, underneath the brows. Speaking of that, it's so good for vision. I have experienced it many times. I would be laying on my belly in the different positions, prone positions, and I just have block under my eyebrows and I look at the clock which is you know across the, the whole room and I, it's a little blurry I don't have perfect vision so after I block I look at the clock and I see wow it's amazing I see so much clearer so I always block on my eyebrows on the forehead I put it on um, under the brows I put on sinuses I put in the nasal labial also called smile lines right there and when you put it right here in your nasolabial lines, it's not just the lines that you're helping. You're also helping your gums because healthy gums equal healthy teeth. That's why I don't go to dentists because I just 
as soon as I feel something, even slight, I begin blocking my lower jaw, my upper jaw, and a little bit of a clove oil helps. So I sometimes even do triple blocking. Why not? If I have to block my pecs, I put block under each pec, and why not? And I put another baby block on my forehead or on my upper jaw or in my sinuses, whatever. And if I'm on my side, I always block either my neck or my IT band or our calf. There's, there's so many ways to block, and I just am so grateful. Wow, Anna, thank you so much. One of the things that's just screaming at me from your sharing is how much time you have saved yourself. Because oh, yeah. we have a lot of people saying, you know, I don't have any time in a day to, to do this work or I don't have any time to do this or that. But when you factor in the time that you would have spent caring for your body, the slowing down of your body as a result of your injury, the compensating that has to occur with injury that will definitely affect every other part of your body. Because I, I feel that same thing. Like I, I love knowing that I really have everything that I need in my own hands or my own block, as opposed to having to rely on other people. Not that relying on other people is negative and absolutely there are times in our life when we need to seek out those professionals to give us assistance. However, when we can understand how to take care of our own cells, whether it's teeth, you know, fractures, like all of those things, it is so empowering and and efficient because again like you you know what to do and and i know because you well probably for a number of reasons but you being a yoga teacher for so many years you were already very connected and intuitive to your own body and what your body needs which is a beautiful thing because if we have that connection to ourselves and ourself think of all the time people wait to find out something and that waiting creates so much anxiety in the body and that in turn causes us to slow down our breath and go through a process of aging. So you've basically shared in your 20 minutes, all of these incredible things that you do to care for yourself, whether it's injury, anti-aging, getting rid of old scar tissue from injuries from the past, like you've ultimately done this. And now you have a body that moves so beautifully. And I remember in that teacher training event when you said, Deanna, look, and you literally were, you know, just this beautiful expression of the cobra pose. And for you to have shared with me that you had never done it to that extent before and you hadn't even been practicing that much yoga, that excited me to no end. I think Quinn had a pretty similar experience when he did a yoga class as well and he hadn't done one before. Do you want to share, Quinn? Yeah, I, that's when I was taking my first break from bodybuilding. I decided to give yoga a test for a full month without going to the gym. And I've already been blocking for a long time, but it was really interesting to see because like the first, the first class, it wasn't great. Like I was in this, seemed like a steam room. It was so hot in there. I, I could hardly survive more than five minutes without water. And then it was like one, two weeks in, I was going from like, not the last in the class, but I like quantum leaped really quick and I was getting into these poses really, really well and, and fast. And it kind of took me by surprise, but I realized like, man, like block is just releasing so many major adhesions in my body. It felt like the yoga was tying everything together in a way. And what I mean by that is like, it was lengthening everything so it can just all strengthen in a certain way and I remember I think it was that teacher intensive it was either the first or the second one um, many bodybuilders don't have great flexibility in their spine and the cobra pose I can get very uh, like upright with that as well but then I was trying just standing and leaning back as far as I could and I could bring like as, as I'm standing like this my back so it was like parallel to the ground and I still have a video of it and it might be on my Instagram still, I forget, but I, I posted it because I'm like, I've never done this before. And just out of the blue, it's, I could just do it. So that was, that was really interesting. It's really cool to see um, when you try new activities or yoga or whatever it is, you'll be amazed by some of these things that can come at you or not come at you, just what your body can do. So yeah, that, that was really neat. <clears throat> Anna, so 
for, for when you had that, that hip, that pelvis fracture, you know, for, for so many people, that's a really scary scenario. You know, it's one thing to break a pinky or a toe or even the foot. I mean, as, as awful as that is, the, the understanding of breaking a bone so pivotal to our core. How long did that take you to go through that process of healing? And can you share a little bit more in detail about your experience with that specifically? Yes, absolutely. Well, um, having a fracture in the pelvis is actually closer to our heart. As we know, the heart is pumping the blood. So when I had fractures in the metatarsal in the foot, that's more longer route for the blood to be reaching that area. But when it's right here in the pelvis area, I feel like it's actually easier to heal than if you're trying to heal your um, toe fractures or metatarsal fractures. So I just began blocking right away. I remember that. And I was breathing all the time, diaphragmatically, it just, well, I've always been breathing and teaching how to breathe deeply, but it wasn't just as conscious. Like I would just do it in a class. I would teach people how to breathe like a three-part breathing. You inflate your lower, you inflate your middle, you inflate your upper, and you're the same way you exhale, starting with the upper, middle, and lower belly, and all of that, and ujjayi breathing, and different type of breathing there is in yoga, but I would only do it when I'm teaching a class. And of course, I had reached such a mastery there, because I have been doing it all my life, I still do it. And, um, but it wasn't like now, now I'm always breathing diaphragmatically, it's a part of my life now, I'm always doing it, because I'm just so aware of it. It's been already four years and I'm just always doing it. So I was breathing diaphragmatically already and I believe that is such a great part of healing. Plus, in addition to it, when you block, when you put your block in your belly button, you are increasing that effectiveness. It's not just breathing. It's not just oxygenated blood going there. It's also you have this adhesions that you're melting, you're creating space. And so I would just block and breathe and block and breathe and change, go a little bit deeper into the lower belly. Uh, I don't recall if I put the block on my pubic bone. I think I was careful a week or so, but I remember being back to normal self within two to three weeks. It didn't take me long at all. Now, and also I want to mention something about yoga because Queen also mentioned that. Now, when you are trying to do yoga poses and stretches, that is where block can be extremely helpful as well. Just like if you're trying to even do your splits, you, are, you can feel where there is restriction and that's where you put the block. And you put the block there and that block does nothing but removing those restrictions, allowing that frozen fascia to melt and then you stretch again and you say, wow, I'm going so much lower. I'm going so much lower. So it's really, I've seen some people, you know, in my circle of friends and clients that will, I will just help them to hold down to two blocks and go down. And then when there is restriction, when they cannot go any more down, we block that area of hamstring and then they go more down. And it's just very incredible. It's extraordinary when you watch people do that. I agree. That was my first experience um, of really getting an understanding of adding more tissue to length. And I was taking the Iyengar teacher training years ago as well. And this was at the beginning of this journey for me, before, long before block, when I was only doing fluid isometrics on myself with my hands. And I would go to the yoga class and we had these intensive advanced classes for those of us going through the teacher training program. And it was a two-year program. So I would go every single week and I would feel in my body what was holding me back. I would work on those areas throughout the week and then I would go the next week and I would move into a deeper expression of that posture. And people in this practice had been experienced yogis for 20, 30 years and, and I would see them continuing to go into their same pattern. They would never go deeper than they were. And it was neat because I could see myself advancing so quickly in my own body, being able to access these postures and you know just the understanding of you know when you're doing yoga because the fascia will grip and adhere to bone with that 2,000 pound per square inch force 
you're really only able to lengthen what tissue you have available to you in that moment. When we're blocking, we're adding more tissue to lengthen. So that's the cool part. And as you know, you and Quinn and all of us that have done block as well as combining that with stretching experience, it is truly so impactful in how we can manifest space inside the body to access those ranges because that's ultimately what we need is space to be able to have flexibility and because pain aging and disease is a result partly of gravity we're compressed and we become this dense hard body we don't have that fluidity in the body to access those any questions quinn you got one question here what particular block position do you suggest to improve on the Cobra pose? Oh, Anna, would you like to take that one? Well, yes. When we did intensive in Winnipeg for teachers, we blocked the whole back. So blocking the whole back will definitely be the best. But specifically, I would say you need to start with the belly. You need to always start with the core. And you can move up to diaphragm you can move down to lower belly then you would go to the back and you would block the mid back the lower back the upper back and just do it that way and add some more positions in the front and in the back and go from there just add some more positions every day and see yeah. how your cobra goes back always test and see how it's going back and see where you are not, when you are restricted, that should guide you in the process. And then you will be able to do some more positions, repeat the same ones in the mid back, lower back, upper back. Don't forget the upper back. Also the neck as well, the back of the neck. And that you will just guide yourself by repeat. Just like when you do splits, you try it, you see where there is restrictions, you feel it, and then you put the block there. The same exact process will work for the Cobra as well. And I also would like to tell another small story I happened recently to me, remember. Go ahead. <laughs> so a month ago, I was biking. I love to bike and I love a lot of sports. So I was biking. Um, on my swing and what happened was I had actually I went shopping so on my little drawstring bag I had bag full of groceries some like heavy things and that was not very smart but I still did it I like challenges <laughs> so I'm biking and it's like going up the slope and I didn't have a chance to lower my gear and I'm like at highest gear and it doesn't even go anywhere it's just like not going because it's a high gear and it's going up slope i'm i'm not able to, i wasn't able to switch the gear to the easy gear and so my backpack shifted to the side and the weight was so big that i actually fell off the bike so i was able to kind of save myself from doing anything too extreme but i landed on my ankle and so i sprained my ankle my left ankle was extremely painful you know how sprained ankles hurt and again i am just so blessed because i know how what to do i know it's just incredible resource for you if you know that instead of like what people do there when there's a pain they hold their breath instinctively but it, you gotta do opposite you gotta just breathe deeply so i just sat on the ground and i just began breathing I just began breathing. And as I breathe, that severe pain is just getting better and better and just dissipating like right in front of me. I'm just like, wow. And I feel now dumb. I'm saying, I'm not going to call my husband and ask him to come pick me up. It's just too, you know, I'm just not going to do that. So I'm like, okay, let me breathe more. I'm breathing more. I'm just sitting down on the ground and breathing people just passing me. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. So gradually my pain subsided and I was able to walk my bike home. It wasn't that far of a distance, maybe, I don't know, fifth of a mile. I just walked myself home and I just came home. I put my ankle in a big bucket of hot water. It's another thing that is so funny because overseas we believe in hot compresses when there is acute trauma. Well, I moved here in the U.S. 1990. And I became brainwashed like everybody else here. 
ice, 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 ice. Ice is just doing the opposite of what we need to do. We have acute trauma. We have this issue. But some tendons are damaged. You need now the body is trying to repair itself. It's sending the healing proteins. It's sending inflammation, sending blood to create the healing in the in that area. And we do slam the ice, stopping the process of the healing. Why? So I get I went back to my beliefs before I moved to US, which is heat. Same that Diana always advises. Same that happens when we breathe, when we apply the blood. So I put my foot in a bucket of hot water with Epsom salt, and I just sat there. <sighs> Enjoy the the feeling of helping my body heal itself by increasing the temperature of that area and li literally next day i was fine just because i blocked i was doing the diaphragmatic breathing and i applied uh, a lot of heat well and isn't that just just it i remember when i was going through athletic therapy when i was in university back in the 90s and i was working with the westman basketball team at the university of winnipeg so part of our athletic therapy training was we needed to do 1200 hours of work with teams field and clinical so this athlete comes down and I mean I was an athlete in my in my teenage years as well and and beyond so I mean I had suffered as well many acute injuries so this athlete comes down and he just had a contusion on his thigh so I see this immediately I go and I get a hot pack I put it on his leg and then my teacher comes out and he's like what are you doing? You're gonna, like, th this is the opposite of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put ice on it. And I stood there for a minute and I thought, I've had these before. I don't wanna ice this. I mean, it's, it's a muscle that's now like hard and contracted. Like, it, it just was such a disconnect for me. And I'm thinking, I don't get that at all. So, um, but what, what's so lovely, again, just about your experiences is the fact that because you trust your body and the processes of your body, you don't get caught in that fear mode. Pain is pain. Yes, if we fall and we injure ourselves, it's going to be painful. But when you understand the ability for your own body to take care of itself through the breath, and again, when people don't understand what to do, they hold their breath. It's the reaction to pain, fear, and stress. So yeah, I mean, that, that's a normal reaction. But when you can override that reaction and really access that diaphragm, pump oxygen to that space, a force goes in, with that breath, we allow it to come out. If we hold the breath, that force stays in and it creates more damage. So it's all part of the system of the flow. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people also might get stuck on is because when we're taught about things, it gets down to the nitty gritty of the physiology, the chemistry, what goes on between the cells. We really don't need to know that to be able to heal ourselves. All we need to understand is we just want to make sure blood flow can get to the site and be taken away so that there's a, an open system and the body will take care of itself. Mm. That's such a great point. And I remember it was probably five years ago. I, I got to that point. I think I told you, Deanna, I'm like, I don't really think I'm scared of anything to happen to my body, really, especially when it comes from like an injury perspective, because even two days ago i popped my shoulder out and i've pop, popped my shoulders in and out probably since i've been an, an early teenager from hockey and just being dumb <laughs> but um yeah so i was at the lake and then it just it was awkward i was surfing and it just popped out and then it like popped back in again and i'm like okay well this is going to be interesting let's see how fast i can heal this now um so I kept swimming, kept, kept it moving the whole time. I kept surfing even. And then I get back, I block probably only like 30, 45 minutes that night. Like it wasn't crazy, but just because my fascia is a lot more fluid and my systems are more open, I could, I could already tell it was starting to heal really quickly. So then yesterday, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to experiment just strengthening this. So I, I went to the gym, brought my block, started working on a lot of things and I could do almost everything the day after I popped it out when previously if I was in high school and I popped it out in hockey immediately I they would say ice it um, they would wrap it up they would put me in a sling so I can't move it but I get out of the water and I'm just I'm moving it I'm feeling the ranges I'm bringing it to these end ranges holding it and breathing because I didn't have my block on the boat 
and then uh, it's just it's really liberating to feel um, or just to know that you can heal yourself almost with any condition, any injury, and um, yeah. I, I think like Anna's there and Anna, Anna knows that she, she's been there. She's had probably twice as many injuries as I've had, but uh, to be able to know how to heal yourself and it's very simple. It really is simple. And that's what people need to know. Um, it's not as complex. Like what you were mentioning, Deanna, it's, it, you don't need to know exactly what's going on. Oh, I, I, I tore my infraspinatus or whatever it is. That doesn't matter. All, all that matters is that we're improving flow. As long as you have flow, all the nutrients, the oxygen, everything in the body, the body is genius in its design. It knows what it needs to do to heal. So we just have to assist the body. As you mentioned, ice is literally the opposite of assisting your body in healing. Why does your body send inflammation when there's an injury? Because it knows that's the goal to heal an injury. So why are we stopping our body's natural reaction to injury? Why? Because it feels good. It prevents inflammation, but people have an interesting interpretation or understanding of inflammation. And don't get me wrong, there's, there's chronic inflammation, which isn't good. But if you have acute injury inflammation, you have to keep that flow going. As soon as the flow's going and you're assisting it with the healing, that's what's going to rebuild that structure actually probably better than it previously was if you're doing it correctly. But even if let's say you ice it and you have a, an injury and you're watching this right now, it's never too late to release the scar tissue. That's what block therapy is designed to do. So even if you did tear your rotator cuff, uh, separate your shoulder, which is I've never separated my shoulder before. That's pretty severe. My brother has, and you can, you can always get back to that original state. It's all about first aligning the foundation. And then once we've, release those pulling adhesions we're able to get right into more of the injured site to release the scar tissue and promote blood and oxygen flow and then start training everything how it should be aligned correctly and again another great um, thing just to know is that no matter where you are you can still come back like Deanna we've seen some insane like people call these miracles but it's just no you're the miracle you're doing it yourself we're just telling you what to do and you're still the practitioner practicing on yourself so well yeah. and isn't it amazing how fast I mean I, I believe that everything in the universe is a mirror of itself so I mean even look at what's happening to the planet when we stop pummeling it with something that's different than what we should be doing. I mean, th things are changing quickly because the world has slowed down. Animals are coming back. Like the, the air is cleaner. Like th things are changing as a result of that. And it's so incredibly efficient. And somewhere along the way, we stop trusting the process of our innate intelligence in our own body. I mean, God is far smarter than man. And if the body after acute injury is the first thing it does is inflame, there's a reason for that. So for us to think, okay, well, we should stop that natural process. Why, why would we do that? I mean, it, you know, you, you see how life is created. I just, I've been watching a lot of uh, Dr. Zach Bush and he has this most phenomenal 10 minute video of, you know, how we're birthed into the world all the way to death. And it's just incredible. And yet we think that our man-made, women-made solutions are smarter or better than the natural processes that we were given to thrive in this world. So I, I think we've been so conditioned to fear pain that because when pain happens, as Anna said too, if you know what to do with that pain and connect to your breath, you, like Anna, you, you didn't feel your pelvic pain because you connected to your breath. So how profound is that? Where somebody else that is terrified, they don't know what happens, now they're holding their breath, their whole system is becoming starved for the most important nutrient, and then you're in this place and you're getting x-rayed, which is creating more damage. I mean, it's just, there are moments when that needs to happen, but when you can take matters into your own hands, the result, as you've seen, I mean, you, you hardly went through a downtime with your significant injuries because you knew what to do for yourself. And that's just amazing. Yes, I agree with you. It's absolutely amazing. And I also like to watch Dr. Zach Bush 
I think he is incredible, extraordinary, very interesting, and I love listening to him and watching him. Yeah, and I can go on and on and tell you more things. I just don't know if there is enough time for me to tell you everything. I had a kneecap injuries too, like being so active. I mean, I am going to be 57 next month. And when I go with my grandchildren to the playground, I run with them. I go hang upside down with them. I feel and act like I'm in my 20s, you know. And that's what happens when you are so connected to your body and you just know how to breathe you. I, I don't have any fear. Like you said, I don't have any fear of hurting myself. I don't have fear of pain. I know what to do if I do get pain. Just like when I recently had my ankle sprained, it was pretty painful, very much so. I remember the pain at the moment was very, very intense. But as I began breathing, it just went away. And I was able to walk on that sprained ankle. And it was swollen, but, but not too bad. And I believe it's because I put it in a big bucket of hot Epsom salt water, really hot. Like as hard as my body could tolerate. <laughs> and that's what helped. It, it, it's incredible. It's incredible. It, it feels, make me see, makes me feel bad when people ice instead of putting heat because I see what happens when you use heat. I was fine the next day. I was. Amazing. Now, I also assume um, you feel pretty confident in your immune system. Absolutely. And I feel also very blessed that, Diana, you're so kind and generous to provide everybody who has started package with that heart and lung class, how, how gracious it is, because this is what we need. We need to increase our, improve our immunity. And what is a better tool to do that than breathing and doing class for heart and lungs? People, it's lungs. This is what, what happened. This is what people die from having double pneumonia in the lungs. And we can do this class for free. Everybody has it. We need to do that class because people that I know, they haven't done it and they should do it because it's just really, really going to improve your immune system. That class that everybody has in your starter package, I've done it with my husband. He did it with me. <laughs> and not once, I just do it periodically. And it's just incredibly kind of you. And I thank you for that. Oh, well, thank well. you. And, and it really ties together that, that study in 2014. We, we've referenced this numerous times relating to weight loss, where they proved that 84% of weight loss comes through proper exhalation. But if we think about that in the context of toxicity, the reason that so many people are um, increasing in their size, I mean, I was that person. I, I wasn't... I wasn't overeating and I was exercising and I was getting bigger and ballooning because of the process of working out so hard and compressing, creating compression and ballooning and toxicity. I was, I was a mess. I mean, my, I had broken capillaries. My skin was red. Like I looked like if you put like a pin in me, I would, I would explode. Right. But I wasn't intaking a lot of calories. So when I, started this process and I started to see change so rapidly in my size and shape, of course that, that excited me immensely. But when that study came out, I was thrilled to hear that because it's not just about weight loss. That is about toxicity in the body. 84% is removed through proper exhalation. So if we can wrap our head around that, what is it that lowers our immune system? It's an unhealthy body. So if we can remove all that garbage that efficiently by connecting to the breath, and that's where block therapy, in my opinion, is so profound because when we work the fascia in the rib cage in the core, we create, just like with yoga, you know, being able to go deeper into a stretch, we also create more room for that diaphragm muscle to work properly, whether we're pulling oxygen in or removing carbon dioxide and waste. When that muscle works to our advantage the best that it can, we are far stronger than we ever could think or give ourselves credit for. So um, again, that, that just tying those, tying those dots together for people to really understand overall health is important. Is there anything in there, Quinn? Any other questions or comments for Anna? Uh, this is an interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> This <laughs> could open a can of worms. <laughs> um, 
what is the block therapy view on face covering during the crisis? And we don't have to get into heavy detail because um, she said, I don't like masks personally. Rules are getting tighter in the UK. Um, so I'll share. I'll be happy to share. Okay. okay. So um, this is such a touchy subject because obviously we're being mandated in some areas to wear them and it's getting really, really tricky. But that is where I would absolutely refer people to watching Dr. Zach Bush, Dr. Rashid Buttar. They have very strong opinions, which I completely agree with on the face mask. And we just talked about it. We talked about the 84% of weight loss detox through proper exhalation. You can't do that if you're wearing a mask. You can't pull oxygen in if you're wearing a mask. It, it is the opposite of what we want. And I'm going to leave it at that because, again, there's going to be people that are going to be very polarized in this subject. But if we want to be able to take care of our own immune health, we have to understand how the body actually works. And it is through the nose that we pull in the external environment and we remove the internal environment. And keeping that area open is absolutely crucial for health. So yeah. I'll just... Stop talking now. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> Fully with you on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll stop right there. But yeah. anyways. Um, now, Anna, you also had, sorry, Quinn, did you have more to say No, there? no. I was just going to check if there's any more comments, but, uh, or questions, sorry, but no, no, no okay. more questions. So. Anna, you also have uh, been working, you're, you're, a, you're a therapist and you've been working with um, people with block therapy. Do you have any success stories or things that you'd like to share? Yes, in fact, I do. I have quite a few people that I can <clears throat> share the results. One of them is a friend who had, she was a former runner. She had a um, very bad case of severe pain in her IT band, as a lot of runners experience that, as well as cellulite, as well as... Um, the pain in the hamstrings, which I thought was linked to um, sciatica. And so I was working with her mainly on the lower body, but of course starting in the core and working in the lower body. And um, no surprise that her symptoms just got so much better and she just felt a whole lot better, her sciatic pain in the back of her legs was gone and her IT band got softer and um, uh, more pliable and it was really incredible to see her go through the process. It was pretty um, incredible to see her go through that. So that's one of the friends. Another friend I have, she had Severe headaches, migraines, the way she calls them. I don't even know if it's properly diagnosed as a migraines, but she always said she had a lot of headaches and a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress in her life. So this is the other part of the body. And of course, we are all interconnected. So we have to work the whole body and improve not just breathing and release the restricted fascia. We also have to work on our foundation and a postural alignment. So, and that's what I had to work with, with my friend on her lower body. I have to mention that. And now we are with this friend who has all these issues in her upper body. And so here is, I believe black therapy is profoundly helpful and beneficial for everything. But it is my belief that anxiety, headaches, stress, panic attacks can be relieved with greater success than any other issues because we have such an incredible positions as my favorite is a sternum bone. The sternum bone is just amazing. It just never fails to amaze me. So with this friend, I worked obviously the whole body, starting with the core, incorporating lower, hips, legs. It all starts with the feet, as Diana always says. It all starts with the feet. 
but with that upper body release the chest the diaphragm the sternum the clavicle the neck the head the tongue alignment all of that and most importantly breathing it is so meditative so incredibly helpful for calming the mind improving the frequency of panic attacks and anxiety it's just amazing when i saw what was happening to her i was almost in tears some days when she would tell me anna i'm feeling so much better after i did the class so much better so i actually forgot to mention something pretty amazing that happened to me probably a couple months and a half ago and this is what happened and it's just still when i think about it i i am in just shock i usually sleep very well because i block before i go to sleep i take block with me and i put my block right in the upper back right where my shoulder blades are because it just feels so good at the end of the day when everything we do we are leaning forward and our we have rounded shoulders everything we do in front of computer cooking reading everything we are always rotate, rotated forward so when i am in bed i always put my block right behind my shoulder blades and i lay there for at least five minutes and i feel so incredibly good just knowing and feeling my chest my lungs my heart being pushed to the proper position forward where they belong where god created them to be not back but up and forward so i do it every night so i have sleep very well that one night i woke up and I was coughing so much. I was coughing and I never cough. I'm never sick. I'm just never sick. And this, this night was just like completely weird. I was coughing so much. I couldn't even sleep. I was laying in bed, coughing, 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 nonstop coughing. And I'm like, what am I going to do now? I can't sleep. I just can't stop coughing. Well, what did I do? I got on my floor. I got on my mat. I put the block right on my sternum, on my knees, and I just began breathing on the block, on the sternum. I lift my arms up. My husband calls it airplane. <laughs> I lift my arms up as I'm on the block. I stayed there maybe five to eight minutes. I went back to bed. There is no cough. It's gone. It's just gone. And I'm like, I, I, it's like never ceased to... Um, surprised me how effective block is I just I had no cough anymore it was gone just by doing the sternum position I don't, don't tell anybody because people I don't think they'll believe me it's just unbelievable I don't I can't even explain how putting your body on a sternum on the block will just take care of that cough so that's what happened this is what happened exactly Anna, thank you so much for sharing. You are such an incredible example of what the body can do when it's open and flowing. And you obviously have always taken such good care of yourself, but um, it sounds like things have really changed dramatically since you've brought this practice into your life. Um, is there any last words you'd like to share before we wrap up? Well, my best piece of advice would be use your block. If you have it, use it don't put it on the shelf and let it sit there it's no good if you just look at it you have to use it you have to use your block i i know people who bought blocks and they don't use them because busyness and life happens but it's very important to use it because you will do your body incredible big favor and it's all tested i'm a science major a phd in physics i don't take anything I have to verify myself. Like Diana, I give you a lot of hard time when I would verify everything you said. I would go to do my research. Everything is verified. I personally checked into everything and it works. It works wonders. Thank you, Anna. Wow. My pleasure. That was fantastic. Thank you so much, Anna. That was a great discussion, um, especially just talking about how amazing the body can heal itself if you just give the body what it needs. So you're a perfect example and you explain that so well. So thank you so much.
Um, so that's going to wrap up this discussion. Uh, this is going to be live on YouTube. So if you have any additional questions and you're watching this recording, just type it in the comment section below and we will reply. And that is everything. So hope you all have. And all of Anna's links are, are listed below. Right. And Anna's links are going to be listed below the video on the YouTube channel. And it's also in the, um, uh, the discussion. What is that? In the description, sorry, uh, right now. So if you want to check out Anna, click on that link and you're going to learn all about her there. So that's everything. Have a Wonderful. great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you.